Beijing is planning to extend its threatening military exercises in response to U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to the self-ruled island of Taiwan. The exercises surrounding Taiwan have disrupted shipping and air travel and have substantially raised concern about the potential for conflict. The drills are apparently targeting U.S. support for Taiwan in the event of a potential Chinese invasion. China has ignored calls to calm the tensions, and there was no immediate indication of when it would end what generally amounts to a blockade. Well, with us now to unpack the ongoing situation is Mr. Bradley Bowman, Senior Director of the Center on Military and Political Power at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Sir, welcome back to Forum Daily. So let's start with these renewed drills by China. What sort of message is China trying to send Taiwan and the world right now? I think the bottom line is that Beijing is trying to coerce, intimidate Taiwan. They're trying to put fear in the high, uh, in the hearts of the leaders of Taiwan and trying to uh, bully them, frankly. I mean, just to use some real practical terms that most of your viewers will understand. I mean, you have uh, the Chinese economy, which is much, much larger than the Taiwanese economy, and they've used a good portion of that wealth to undertake the largest military modernization effort in the history of the People's Republic of China. And the more capable their military becomes, the more willing they appear to use it to accomplish their political objectives in Taiwan. And there's no telling when these exercises will end, even though it's uh, disrupting shipping and air traffic in the region. Uh, What do you expect the next phase of these drills to look like? You know, uh, I would expect if I were a military, I used to be a U.S. Army military officer, military planner. If I were a military planner in China, which I'm not, but if I were, I would look for an opportunity, as others have said, to make this the new normal, basically to uh, kind of uh, acclimatize the world to having uh, People's Liberation Army aircraft, ships, submarines, missiles, flying, sailing, operating closer to Taiwan to exhaust the Taiwanese, frankly, and it is exhausting, and kind of like a frog in the water, slowly turn up the heat, and so that one day it just looks like another exercise when it really is actually game time and a real invasion or attack. And this is adding to concerns around the potential for conflict. So how likely are we to see China maybe launch a military invasion of Taiwan in the near future? You know, history is riddled with examples of surprise attacks. Uh, The United States has been a victim of a few of those and as of some of our allies. So I'm always reluctant to make confident predictions about the future. But what I am confident saying is that Beijing uh, wants to reunite Taiwan underneath its authoritarian rule. Uh, And uh, they would prefer to do that without a war. Uh, But if a war is required, I believe that they will do it. And they've done a lot of saber rattling, especially lately, as they've become more powerful. Whether they keep that saber in its sheath will be based on their perception of the relative combat power of China versus the United States. And sadly, that balance of power has eroded. And without urgent action, it will erode further. And meanwhile, we've seen China impose sanctions on Ms. Pelosi, cut off defense and climate talks with the U.S. How is all of this likely to impact the U.S.'s efforts in the Indo-Pacific overall? I I think, uh, you know, we've the United States, frankly, has struggled to maintain quick and reliable communications, kind of conflict communications with uh, Beijing, much like uh, the United States had during the Cold War with the Soviet Union. You kind of had the big the big red phone, if you will, where you pick up things to avoid miscalculation and escalation. We've struggled, frankly, to get Beijing to pick up the phone, if you will. And so when you're putting all this combat power in a small area uh, and and undertaking such provocative actions, and then you're not even going to communicate with us, uh, that's a toxic formula that leads to bad places. And we're only seeing these tensions grow. So how would a rift between two of the world's biggest economies impact the rest of the world, especially Canada? Well, that rift is already happening, right? And, 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 you know, I often use the metaphor of two gladiators. I have often used the United States and China as two gladiators in a ring. But one of those gladiators has been asleep, and that was the United States. We were asleep for years, and we were getting pounded on while we were asleep, and our pocket was getting picked. And since about 2018 or so, we started waking up, and we've started to stand up for our own interests, and suddenly we're the provocateurs because we're defending ourselves. And I think the United States and our allies need to wake up that this is unlike 
unlike any threat uh, our modern democracies have ever seen. We're facing a hostile ideology, an enormous economic wealth, and a military that in some cases, in some areas, is better than our own. And if we don't work together, I fear the day may be sooner rather than later that we'll see Chinese military aggression against the free people of Taiwan. And if America doesn't come to Taiwan's assistance, that would set a tectonic uh, earthquake through the region where allies and partners and adversaries alike would question long-held assumptions. Lots to keep our eyes on. Mr. Bowman, thank you again for joining us today on Forum Daily. Thank you.